In the last lecture, we implemented a very simple auth service in our Angular application. Now, from this lecture, we are going to learn how we can implement route guards in Angular and what each route guard is used for. And we are going to start with can activate route guard. So, the can activate route guard decides if a route can be activated or not. We use this route guard when we want to check on some condition before showing the component view to the user. The common use case where we can use a connectivate route guard is when we want to protect a route from unauthorized users. For example, let's say there are some routes which can only be accessed by a logged in user. In that case, we can use connectivate route guard. In our Angular application, if I go to this courses page, here we have a list of course and each course has this details button and buy now button. So currently when I click on this details button, it will take me to the details of that course. And if I click on this buy now button, this buy now button is not going to do anything because for that we have not written any logic. But what we want is when this buy now button is clicked, we want to show the checkout page to the user. But the checkout page should only be shown to the user if the user is logged in. If the user is not logged in, we should not redirect the user to the checkout page. Instead, we should ask user to first log in and then check out the course. So here, we want to restrict the unauthorized users, the not logged in users, to access the checkout page. And for that, we can use can activate route card. So let's first go ahead and let's create a route for this buy now button for the checkout page. So let me go to VS Code. Let me close all these files for now. Okay, I'll keep this auth service open and this routing module open. Now, let's go to this routing module file and there we are defining all the routes. So here I'm going to create a new route called checkout and I'm going to create this checkout route as a child route for this courses route because we are going to check out a course, right? So that's why I'm going to make this checkout route a child route for this courses route. So let's create a new route here. Let's specify the path and the path is going to be checkout. So in the address bar, the path will be root URL slash courses slash checkout. And when this URL is typed in the address bar, we want to display the view of checkout component. So if I scroll up, we also have a checkout component. So here we have a checkout component. We want to display the view of this checkout component when this route is typed in the address bar. For that, let's specify the component property here. And to that, I'm going to assign checkout component. Okay, so here we have created our route. Now, when the view of this route will be displayed, when we click on the buy now button. So let's go to the courses component because in the courses component, we are displaying the list of all the courses and in there, we will have the buy now button. So here we have our courses component there. Let's go to courses component.html. If I scroll down here, we have the buy now button. So on this button, again, I'm going to add this router link directive. And to this router link directive, I'm going to specify the path as slash courses slash checkout. With this, if I save the changes and if you go to the web page and if I click on this buy now button, you see it has redirected us to the checkout page. Currently, all these values in this page, which you see here, these are all hard coded. These are not based on which course we have selected, but we are going to change it in the future lectures of this section. So basically what we're going to do is we are also going to pass the data for which we have clicked on the checkout button and then we will display the details of that course here. Currently, no matter which course I select, for example, if I click on the buy now button of this react course, then also in the checkout page, you will see the course name as complete modern JavaScript course because it is hard coded. Anyway, now when we click on this buy now button, we are being redirected to the checkout page. So that's okay. But it should only redirect us to the checkout page if the user is logged in. Currently, no user is logged in. So if I click on the logout button, you will see that we have been logged out. Okay, and we have been redirected to the login page and currently no user is logged in. Then also, if I go to the courses page and if I click on the buy now button, we will be redirected to the checkout page, which is not the ideal scenario which we want here. 
we should only be redirected to this checkout page if the user is logged in. If the user is not logged in, he should not see this view here. And for that, we can use can activate route guard. Now, as we learned in the introduction to route guard lecture, till Angular 14, we used to implement route guards in a different way. And from Angular 15, we implement it in a slightly different way. And in this section, in this course, I'm going to cover both the approaches. So, for example, if you are working in an Angular project where you're using Angular version 14 or any lower version, there the implementation of a route card will be different than how we implement it today in Angular 15 and Angular 16. And if you're using Angular 14 and lower version, then you should know how you can implement route cards in those versions. And that's why I'm going to cover both the approaches. And in this lecture, I'm going to cover the older approach the approach which we have been using till Angular 14. And in the next lecture, I will also explain the newer approach in which we can implement the can activate route card. Now, till Angular 14, what we used to do is, first, we used to create a service which should inherit from can activate interface. Let's go ahead and let's do this. So here, let me first close this courses component.html file. And we are going to create a new service. So inside this service folder, we are going to create a new file. And I'm going to call this file authguard service. Inside this file, let's go ahead and let's create and export a class. Let's call this class authguard service. And since it is a service class, I'm also going to decorate it with at injectable decorator. And in order to use this at injectable decorator, we also need to import it from angular slash co. So let me first go ahead and let me import it from angular slash co. Okay. And to this decorator, we are going to pass a metadata object. And in there, I will specify the provided in property. And there, I'll set the value to root. So basically, we want to provide this service from root from app module. Now, this service we are going to use for implementing route cards. In this case, we want to use this service to implement can activate route card. So, the first step is this service should inherit from can activate interface. Okay. And in order to use this can activate interface, we also need to import it from Angular slash router. As you can see, this can activate is striked out. This simply means that it is deprecated in Angular version 16. For this project, I'm using Angular version 16. But if you're using Angular version 14 or lower version, in that case, you will not see this interface striked out because there it is not deprecated. So this is the first step. We need to implement this can activate interface for our service class. Now, if you notice here, we have an error. That's because since we are implementing this can activate interface, this can activate interface provides a method called can activate. And we need to provide an implementation for that can activate method. So inside this class, let's go ahead and let's implement can activate method. And this can activate method, it takes two parameters. The first parameter is an instance of activated route snapshot. So I'm going to call this parameter route. You can name it anything, but the type here is going to be activated route snapshot. And again, in order to use this activated route snapshot, we need to import it from angular slash router. And the second parameter is an instance of router state snapshot. So I'll simply call it as state. You can name it anything, but the type here is going to be router state snapshot. Again, in order to use it, we need to import it from angular slash router. All right, so here we have created this can activate method and this method should return a Boolean value. Basically, let me show you what it should return. So this method, it should return either a Boolean value or it should return an observable which emits a Boolean value. So we can specify it like this. And in order to use this observable, we also need to import it from RxJS. So let me go ahead and let me do it here. Okay, or it should return a promise 
which resolves to a boolean value so this is the signature of this can activate method it should either return a boolean value if you are working with asynchronous data in that case it should return an observable which emits a boolean value or it should return a promise which resolves to a boolean value in this case we are not working with any asynchronous data so i'll simply specify the type as boolean and we are going to return a boolean value from here so for now let me go ahead and let me return true from here and you will notice that all the errors are gone so in this way we have created a can activate route card what we have done so far we have created a service which is inheriting from can activate interface inside the service class we have implemented the can activate method and that method should return a boolean value based on if the route can be activated or not and finally we need to assign that service which is implementing from can activate interface to the can activate property of route object let's understand this so here we want to protect this checkout route right so this object here it is the route object it has few properties like path component in the same way it also has a property called can activate and to this property we need to assign an array and inside this array we need to specify the service name which is implementing from can activate interface in our case that service is this auth guard service so first of all we need to import this auth guard service here in this router module so let's go ahead and let's write that import statement so we need to go to services folder and in the services folder we have this auth guard service okay and now let's go ahead and let's specify the service name here which is auth guard service and that's it so if i save the changes here currently from this method from this can activate method we are returning true that means this route can be accessed by anybody if i go back to the application let's go to the courses page and let me click on this buy now button you see we are able to access it now if i go back to vs code and instead of returning true if i return false from here in that case this route it will not be accessed by anybody because from within this can activate method we are returning false so if we save the changes and if we go back to the application again you see the checkout page is not being displayed here let's go to the courses page and let's click on this buy now button and i have clicked on this buy now button several times but it is not redirecting us to the checkout page that's because can activate route card is now protecting courses slash checkout route okay if i type courses slash checkout in the address bar and if i press enter you see we are not seeing anything in the view that's because now since we are returning false from this can activate method it is going to protect this checkout route so keep in mind that when we return true from this can activate method in that case it will allow us to access that route on which we have used the can activate route card but if we are returning false from here in that case it will not allow us to access the route on which we have used the can activate route card so here instead of returning a hard coded value true or false what we can do is we can write some condition based on which we can return a boolean value true or false here what i want is here we have the auth service in the auth service we have this is authenticated method and this is authenticated method is returning the value of is logged property now the value of the is logged property will be false if no user is logged in but its value will be true if a user is logged in so that's what we want to check here if the user is logged in we will allow user to go to the checkout page but if the user is not logged in we will not allow user to go to the checkout page so we are going to use this is authenticated method of this auth service inside this auth guard service for that first of all we need an instance of this auth service class inside this auth guard service so for that what we are going to do 
let's create a property let's call it auth service it is going to be of type auth service okay and i'm going to use the inject method and in order to use this inject method we also need to import it from angular slash co and there i'm going to specify the type as auth service so in this way angular will inject an instance of this auth service class inside this auth guard service class and that instance will be assigned to this auth service property so here what we are going to do is we are going to check if this dot auth service dot is authenticated so this is authenticated is a method which is going to return us a boolean value it will return true if the value of this is logged is true otherwise it will return false okay so we are using it inside this if statement so if this expression here if it returns true in that case from within this can activate method we are going to return true that's because in that case the user is logged in and since the user is logged in we will allow user to view the checkout page but if this expression returns false in that case let's write an else statement and from here we will return false so i can simply say return false okay and before we return false from here what we will also do is we will redirect the user to the login page all right and for that we need an instance of router class so here let me go ahead and let me create a property i'll call it router it is going to be of type router and in order to use this router we need to import it from angular slash router and again let's use this inject method and ask angular to inject an instance of this router class and that instance will be assigned to this router property so before returning false what we will do we will say this dot router dot navigate and where do we want to navigate the user we want to navigate the user to login page okay with this let's save the changes let's go back to the web page let me first go to the courses page so when i have saved the changes here when i have saved the changes this application will be reloaded so let's go to the courses page and as we know when the application will reload for the first time the is logged property in the auth service will be false so now when i try to go to the checkout page by clicking on this buy now button it will redirect us to the login page because no user is currently logged in but let me go ahead and let me log in using this login form so the username is js password is 12345 when i click on this login button you see it says welcome john smith you are logged in let's click on this okay button and it will redirect us to the courses page now when i click on this buy now button it should take us to the checkout page okay so in this way using can activate route card we are protecting this checkout route from unauthorized access so this is the use of can activate route card here this can activate method if it returns true in that case the route on which we have used the can activate route card it will be accessible otherwise if this can activate return false in that case the route on which we have used this can activate route card it will not be accessible that's it so keep in mind that from within this can activate method we should return a boolean value true or false based on whether we want to allow the user to access the route or not so these are the four steps in which you can implement can activate route card in angular 14 and lower versions now in the next lecture let's see how we can implement can activate route card in angular 15 and higher versions